Hey, welcome back to part two of this series on creating denim inside Substance Painter. Um, now I want to add some more details based on what we started off in the first part. So we've created this kind of base denim fabric here and we want to lay up some more details on top of this. Um, I've changed my top stitch color a little bit. Maybe make it brown. Yeah. And I just want to change the color of this green thing in the bottom because this green is too much to look at. So in the last video, I showed how to section all of this mesh off into different areas. And now we want to add more detail on this um, leather, uh, denim, not leather, sorry. So let's go back to the denim folder. And I want to pick out the twill of this uh, denim weave. So the twill is this, this diagonal grain that right now isn't super visible. So to do this, I'm just gonna add a fill on top of this. And I want this to just affect the base color. So I'm gonna turn off all these other channels just to be left with base color. And in this, I'm gonna drop my normal map from the denim that I imported earlier. So where is it? Okay, let's just re-import this again. So these were from Clo3D. Um, these were extracted from the, the, the Clo3D source file and I'm just going to bring these into Substance Painter. I'm going to import them into my library and I'm going to import them as textures. And then I'm going to take this normal map and just drop it into this um, base color right here. Um, you'll see the tiling is set different because my base tiling is um, set to 5.4 and this one is set to 1 so I just want to set these to the same scale and then I'm just going to right click and do add filter and then add a gradient in this filter section here and with this gradient now applied I can move these values to pick out the kind of dark shadow in this um, this denim. So I'm just going to move these, push the white value up and the gray value down till I get this. Um, so now you can see there's like um, a definition of this diagonal line and I can just set this base color blend to multiply, right? So you can see the visually the difference it's, it is becoming a bit darker but now I can really see how this fabric is structured. Um, if it's too dark or intense you can just bring this um, blend option down a little bit but I think for now this is good. Um, we want to then add some more kind of wash details on top of this um, so we're just going to add another fill but before I start adding more I'm actually going to rename some of this stuff because um, Otherwise, we're going to end up with a lot of layers and not know what we're dealing with. So I'm going to call this Twill Shadow. And this one Edgeway. Because it's just um, giving us this little worn out edge, this soft um, kind of white. So let's add another fill. And to this, again, we want to just affect the base color and maybe as well the roughness and then to this we want to add a noise so let's look under textures and look for i like clouds three i've got clouds one two and three so let's just go for three right now and um let's add this into the base color Actually, let's turn off this roughness channel as well. So we're just affecting the, the base color right now. Um, the idea with this is to blend this across so that we get a, a washed effect like in the reference image. So these are the references and you'll see we've got this kind of speckling happening across the denim. The color of it, there's these darker areas and some lighter areas that we see the shadows in the seams. Um, we want to pick all this out as we go through. So I'm going to use these noises to create this kind of um, imperfections in, in the base color. So let's set this to 
multiply. So again, I'm going over the, the blend options here. Um, see how they work. Screen overlay, maybe overlay is quite nice for this one. Um, it's dark. So again, you can right click, um, add a filter and then to the filter, add a gradient. And then you could change this black, for example, to blue so that we start to get more of a blue color coming through into this than a dark uh, black. Um, the mid gray, we can again change to a, a blue tone. And then the white, we could even set to you know a really light blue. So as well as adding this wash effect, this noise on top, we're also adding in some extra blue tones to this as well. Um, I want to just change the parameters of this noise. So if you click on your fill, go and do your noise, scroll down a bit and look at scale and disorder, we can change how much of this wash we're getting. So I'm going to keep it quite low, I think. A bit into the disorder. We can change the balance if we want to pick out any more of this kind of washed out color and the contrast we can play with as well. So again, spend time playing around with these settings and see how we can use them to kind of create some nice effects. So I'm just gonna drop the opacity of this a bit and then let's add, um, let's do a, another one of these. So I'm gonna do uh, another fill, set this to just affect the color. And then we could use like say clouds one as the base color and let's blend this on top again so we can do darken do we have yes which isn't making much difference so let's try and multiply right multiply now we're adding again some uh, darker tones into this and i'm going to add again a filter add a gradient and then change some of these tones again to blue or bluer tones. So uh, this one can stay about here. Yeah, add like a light blue up here. In the white, we can add, um, you know, a really gray blue tone. So again, we're layering up some additional color in this, but the I want to blend this out a bit, so I'm just going to bring this opacity down. Um, so now we're really starting to create this um, kind of speckled washed denim look. Um, the fabric surface still looks quite flat. Like if I look here, things look quite flat. There's not much wrinkling happening. And this is quite easy to do in Substance Painter. Again, if we add another fill, I'll just rename this wash one and then wash two. And then this we can call wrinkles. And I just want this to affect the height channel. So I'm going to turn everything else off and just leave height open and then take this one called cloth fold medium and just drop this in the height. Um, to really see what this is doing, you can look at the height map and you see that we're getting some wrinkles across this. Um, the tiling amount will increase the number of wrinkles, the contrast balance, um, again, play around with these things. If you look at your normal height mesh, you'll also see how this is being translated into your normal map. And right now this is really, really strong. So let's go back to the material view and we can see that this looks like, um, you know, way too wrinkled. Um, experiment with the other ones. You've got cloth fold large, so you could try this guy as well. But the point being, we want to blend this all out. So if I go to height, um, as the channels that I'm affecting up here on my layers palette, and then I look under this blending here, this is set to 100. So if I bring this down, my wrinkles are going to ever so slightly disappear. And if I'm getting wrinkles where I don't want them, like this bit in the chest here just doesn't look great. Um, just click random. Under this seed option here, click random, and it will kind of reposition the tiles. So just keep clicking until you get a nice kind of layout like you want it. And this now looks a lot kind of better and more realistic because of this wrinkle imperfection. This is before and this is after and it's not much but it's enough. Um, 
The next thing we could look at affecting is the edge thickness because when denim is constructed, there would be seam thickness everywhere that is creating this puckering. So we want to add the edge thickness and the, the puckering. So let's add another fill. Call this edge thickness. And again, we just want this to affect the height. So I'm going to turn off all these other channels. And with this, I'm going to right click and add a generator. And the generator I'm going to use in this generator pal panel here is the UV border select. And this will automatically affect, again, all of these, these different channels. And I just want this to affect height. So I'm going to turn all these other ones off. If you want to see visually what this is looking like, you can leave color on. And then you'll see how we can create an edge select around the, the UVs. So I'm bringing the balance down. You can bring the contrast up if you want. Um, distance, how far we are from the edges, smoothness. Again, this will create a little, uh, a tiny gap. Bring the balance quite low down and then just turn this on to height only. So turn off the color and you'll see now you've got this kind of square blocky edges around your uh, UV islands, which is giving us this suggestion of thickness, but it's, it's not, it's not what we want. So right click on this layer, um, click add filter, choose the filter you want. And this is blur. So I'm going to search for blur and add the blur and then just increase the blur intensity slightly just to soften off this edge. And then I'm going to reduce the amount of, uh, use this blending to reduce the height in this, because if I look at the height map right now, um, there's a lot, there's a lot going on and I can soften this off a bit. So I'm just going to, um, reduce this from 100 down just slightly so that we get some shadowing between the, the kind of seam edges. Um, this is without the seam thickness and this is with, so you can see that there's quite a nice uh, difference here. Um, the one thing is if I look at the center front edge of my skirt, which is these two patterns here, I'm actually getting thickness here. And I kind of want this to look like one pattern piece. So if I want to like take off thickness anywhere, I can just right click on this and click add a white mask. Nothing's changed just yet. Go down to your brush options and this is set to black. And if I just paint over this area, I can kind of get rid of the thickness that's, that's here. And this. Yeah. So just paint across the front. I think this is good enough. Again, this is with, with the thickness and this is without. Um, if there's anywhere else that I maybe want to mask off, I could do this now while I'm kind of painting in this, this area, but I think it's kind of fine at this point. Um, the next thing we want to add is the puckering um, around the seam edges, which we've again exported from Color 3D. So we can add this um, on top. I'm going to do this in a different stack though, because basically all of this is procedural. This is got things that we've inputted or generated from um, Substance Painter, but it's not got anything specific to this actual garment just yet. So if I ever want to make a smart material, I could do that with this, but I want to add on top of this, the, the puckering layer, just like I've got the top stitch layer, not inside this folder, because this UV map with this top stitching, um, this fill here, is specific to this model. So if it's specific to the model, I don't want to put it in the smart material because the smart material won't work on other meshes then because they're specific to that mesh. So let's go into this new folder that I've created and just call this puckering. And we're going to add a fill into this folder. And this fill is going to be where the puckering is applied to. So if I search, um, for denim, what was it called when I imported it? Yeah. So this is the normal map that I imported from Clo3D, like I explained in the last video. So there's a link to that if you need to go back to it. Um, drag this into the normal input of this uh, of this layer that we've just placed. And 
the puckering should become visible. I can see this a little bit. Like here, I can see some puckering around this stitching and around the edges. Um, but again, I only want this layer to affect the normal map. I don't want it all these other channels. So I'm going to turn all these off. Just affect the normal and you can see there's a little bit of puckering visible. If I want to intensify this, just call this puckering base, let's say, and then duplicate this layer. And the more times you duplicate this, the more pronounced this puckering is going to become. So I'm just going to probably leave two of these activated. So now in my normal map, if I look at my normal map channel up here, there's very clearly puckering being applied uh, in this normal map. Again, if this looks too much, you can just turn off some of these. Um, again, use your opacity blending options to kind of fix this intensity just how you want it. And you see as well that all the edge thickness is being projected into this normal map now as well. So let's go back to the material view and see where else we can start to add some details now. Um, what could be nice actually is if we look here at this reference, the edges of this garment are actually white and distressed. Like the puckering is lighter in color. The garment edges are, are lighter in color, all these edges. You see here, this is a lot lighter. And that's because of the, when this has been washed after it's been made, this is the areas that, are, you know, being washed the most in this process. So we want to pick out these little white edges and we can do that using, again, this um, UV border select that we used before to add this seam thickness. So I'll go back to my denim layer. I'm going to look for the edge thickness. that's here and I'm just going to duplicate this and instead of this affecting um, the height I want it to affect the color and I'm going to set this layer as well to affect just the color and not the height and what we can then do with this is blend this soft white edge into our base color but I want to take off this blur and I want to sharpen up this so it's really kind of closer to the edge so that we can then have this kind of uh, distressed look on the edges of our scene. Um, I'll go back to my UV border select um, parameters and just bring the balance way, way down. So I get this kind of really thin highlight. And then I'm going to change the, the blending option of this back to base color. So I'm affecting the base color channel and set this to screen so all the black is taken away and we're left with these white edges and then just reduce the intensity of this a little bit. So again, we're gonna kind of create this little white highlight all around the edges of this garment and this is being done uh, procedurally. So uh, again, this isn't specific to this mesh. We can do this on any mesh so we can build this into our smart material. This is without that edge, uh, selection of this is with. Is it still affecting the height? This is a question. Yes, it is. So, right. If I go back to UV border select and I turn off this height, I'm going to take that height information back out. This is with and this is without, and I think it's going to be better without. If I go back up here, I don't want this extra intensity of like a, um, of more raised information in the scene. So I'm going to turn this off and just leave it with the base color. And I think I can just reduce this blend a little bit more, just a bit. Okay. So this is really starting to look, I think something like what we want now. Um, the only other thing we want to really look at is how these seam shadows are working. Because if I look at mine, I don't have any of these white highlights in the puckering. I only have those white highlights um, on my seam edges right now, and this looks quite blue and this looks quite gray. So maybe we want to increase the blue of this considerably. I mean, it depends on the photograph, I guess, that we're looking at, um, but it needs to be a bit richer in color as well, I think. So let's look at um, first the, the puckering. So let's go back to the puckering folder, add another fill, use the base color again this time and I'm just going to add my normal map into the base color so that I can now use this as uh, color information and I'm going to add uh, is this in the right folder nope go in the puckering folder right 
and now in the puckering folder i want to right click on this add filter go back to gradient so delete this and do gradient and let's see how we can pick out some highlights around here so we want black and white information so i want to slide the black down a bit maybe slide this white there so if I push this in a kind of weird direction, I'm going to get these white highlights starting to come through. Kind of like this. Great. So now that we've kind of used this gradient to push um, the levels of this normal map, I want to, again, blend this base color and let's see what we can do. So screen. Let's see about that. Overlay. No. That is working. Multiply. Nothing seems to be working. Let's see why. Okay, so the best way for us to blend this over, I've tried changing this to multiply and not much is happening. I can just change the opacity of this. If I go to my my puckering folder, um, I think I'm just going to create a new one and call this um, puckering shadows and just drag this into my new folder layer and set this blend of this entire folder to overlay and if you see now with this toggle i can add in this white kind of uh tone into the into the shadows of this um this fabric so i get like a highlight and a low light inside this puckering now so the puckering is actually being projected also into my base color so this is just the base color of the denim so my base texture is going to have a lot of this information in it as well which is good so again i can reduce the intensity of this because it feels a bit gray by blending this down a little and there we go we've added some nice um, shadows into these seams uh, the last thing like i said is to change the tone of this and i'm just think i'm going to add a layer on top of this so I've got a denim folder, a puckering folder, a shadows folder, and then this, these are other areas of my garment. So above this, I'm going to add a fill. And I'm going to set this just to color and add like a blue, like a rich kind of blue tone. And then let's look at how we can blend this. So let's try value, color, right. Now I've really added this super rich, like oversaturated blue to this. But if I really blend this down, I can just pick out a little bit more of this kind of nice blue color in the denim. So again, to compare, like we're getting a bit closer, but it's quite light. Let's bring some of this blue in. And then I think in my original denim layer, let's see what the base fabric looks like. So let's add a levels to this. So this is my base denim material. So if I zoom in, this is the under layer of everything. Um, I'm going to add a levels to the base color and just push one side of this down a little. No, let's leave that up there and just bring the light side up. Let's shift this gray in the middle a little as well. Let's see if we can just brighten up this denim at all. It looks a bit artificial, this blue now. I want to make it feel a bit more natural. But at least we kind of create a little uh, a lighter effect in this denim. And let's go to this over layered color and just see what we can do with it. Maybe more of a kind of blue green shade that we want. This is looking a lot more like indigo now, which I think is really nice. Okay. So again, use this this top kind of coat to, to blend some colors onto this. Um, one last thing we could look at is just the roughness because right now our roughness is quite flat. Um, so adding one more fill on top of this and just affecting the roughness channel. I'm gonna go back and use my cloud noises again so let's scroll down and choose clouds two this time for example drop this in roughness 
I'm going to look at these noise parameters, change the scale a little. Disorder, yeah. Give me the balance, some kind of gray. This is what we want, okay. And then under the roughness options for this layer, I'm going to just soften this off a little bit. So I see my original roughness underneath that we created in the denim texture. And then I'm seeing this kind of, um, this imperfections again from this noise on top. So if we go back to the material, um, we've got a bit more um, randomness in the roughness of this garment. Um, the buttons are looking a bit weird. So let's look at the buttons. Let's look at the height of this. I'm going to change the blending of this height to um, normal and do the same for the normal map because I think there's something coming through here. And then let's just change the roughness of this because they look too shiny. Let's bring that down and just make the color a bit darker. And that's about it for the denim fabric. The last thing we kind of want to look at is this fabric on the bottom. It does have a, like a little print on it. But for now, I just want to go to the layer. So this one is under dress trim. Um, this is sectioned off using uh, the geometry select. So I've selected just this UV island here. And maybe we want to just bring the opacity down so the light travels through it a little bit. And then we can add um, a base fabric material to this. So if I just put like a twill in the normal map and I can put um, a twill in the bump as well, let's say. Just change the scaling of this a little bit. Bring it down. And then for the height, I'm just going to reduce the intensity. So at least we've got some kind of data uh, in this this fabric on the bottom but the focus of this was really on denim um in the next video i'm going to show you guys how to export this into blender export this already to to, to make some renders and um just see if there's any final tweaks we want to make before um, bringing this over into blender so i'll see you guys in part three